All right, there's a couple little things I need to do to this before we take it driving. I have some new parts I need to install. I have to brain fart. What do I have to do? Fuck six. All right, like I was saying, I got a couple things. I gotta do this before we take it driving. I gotta uh, finish the tie rods, install the fuel pump, run the new brake line, because the old one was just a tad too short. Install the new carburetor, kill switch, and hang the exhaust. The exhaust is all built, I just have to put it on. So that is what we are gonna get done. It's a lot of small stuff, but these are all half an hour a piece. So I'm gonna get started on that. I'm gonna get started on that and let's take this thing driving. As I was saying, I picked up some uh, new parts for the tub. We got a longer brake line now that the swing arm's a little bit longer. And I picked up a 34 mil carburetor. So this is an aftermarket carburetor and it should be a little screamer. It's a flat slide carb. Ooh, look at that. Nice. Also, the guys down at uh, your local senders, they were getting sick of watching me fab stuff up on a plywood table made with two by fours. So they sent me up my very own fab table. So it's right here, it's 3 8 inch steel. It weighs a ton. I'll have to get this thing together so I can start fabbing some stuff on it because that, that's awesome. So that's your local senders. I'll put a link for them in the description and I'll even put a channel tag or whatever right, right here. So go check those guys out and uh, thank them for sending this up because that, that's, that's awesome. Let's get into making some tie rods. So these were the old tie rod ends for the tub when it was still running that old nine horsepower Tecumseh. And they work great for the little yard cart, but this thing's not a yard cart anymore. So we're gonna upgrade the tie rod ends to something a little bit more beefy, something I can trust a little bit better. So we're gonna move from the quarter inch rod end up to something a little bit more substantial, which is a 3 8 inch rod end. They are uh, quite beefier in size, and I trust that a little bit more than these little guys. So we're gonna make these things a little bit more beefy. We got the new beefier tie rods all done, all connected. It's all hooked up. So that we shouldn't have to go back to. The chain is tensioned. There's one thing I'd like to fix. I don't know if I'm gonna do it in this episode is the uh, where I have the top bearing for the steering shaft. 
is just a little soft. Before I upgrade any of this, the weak point was the steering shaft itself. If you turn too much on the locks, the actual bar would flex. Now with the half inch steering shaft, we found the next weak point where is this is this top mount. So I'm not gonna worry about it for now. I'm not really ever gonna be cranking real hard on it. Uh, yeah, it should be fine. We'll worry about that later. The next thing I gotta get onto is, we'll cross that one off the list. We need to install the pulse pump and kill switch and exhaust. Let's get on to mounting that exhaust. Should only take a couple minutes to do. Uh, it'll be something that will let me cool down a bit because I'm sweating like crazy in here. It's so humid. Okay, let's build an exhaust. We lowered the fuel tank from where it sat before, which was up about another three inches higher. And that three inches really made a difference. Now our tank's sitting just about level with the carburetor. It may be, it's, it's a slight bit higher, but I'm pretty confident it's gonna have fuel delivery issues. So I have a pulse pump. I'm gonna put this on, run new fuel lines, and then we'll get on to installing the new brake line that we have for this side. Uh, the old brake line just fits. 
but the ends on it are not changeable and uh, it's kind of on a weird angle where it comes into the rear caliper. So I bought a new brake line, it's a little bit longer. We can run it up the frame so it will flex with the swing arm and it has changeable ends on it. So we can really get the best, uh, get the best banjo fitting for where we're gonna mount it. So I actually couldn't find a fitting to fit what I had already tapped that hole to when I uh, did the governor delete. So I just made myself my own fitting. So we'll see how that works. All right, so I ran out of the size of fuel line that I need and the store is all sold out of it. So. I just kind of have this jury rigged together just to see if I got all my connections right and then I'm going to actually hard mount the pump to the firewall here. So a little bit of a proof of the concept and if it works then we'll stop for good. <laughs> All right, it's not done, but at least it's in driving condition. So we're gonna take it for a little bit of a shakedown test, just to see how it feels and kind of test it out before we actually kind of take all the time to do the lights and the electric start and all that kind of stuff. We're just gonna test drive it. So that's what we're gonna do now. Finally, I know you guys have been waiting a long time to actually see this drive, which is why I'm doing this now, just taking this for a rip. So, I mean, 
that's that's all we can do is just take this thing for a drive. So I'm gonna get started and uh, see what happens. <laughs> Well, there it is. It's, uh, it works. Um, so after that little test run, things I need to improve, I got to cut a bigger cutout for the chain guide because the chain is rubbing on the bottom of the tub. Um, you kind of hear it going every once in a while, especially at idle when it's, when it's not under load and the, ch the chain's just kind of bouncing, it comes up and I mean, this thing's so hollow too, that little bit of sound, it, it just echoes right through. It makes it sound a lot worse than it is. So I'm gonna cut out that a little bit under my butt here and give it a little bit more space for the chain. Another thing is 
I think that my CVT is a little on the small side. We've done a little bit of upgrades to this motor. It's making more than the stock 13, 14 horsepower. And it's definitely making more power than what that little 40 series torque converter is rated to. The CVT, I could always go to a bigger CVT or I could kind of get rid of the amount of load that that CVT is seeing by just kind of gearing it down a bit in the rear. Cause I mean, I don't really need to be going 75 miles an hour in this thing. It's fun. If I do want to go that fast, I mean, I can always just get split sprockets or get a split sprocket hub and just be able to change what the final drive is. I mean, that would be work pretty good because on the dirt track, you'll never see that kind of top speed. So I could definitely gear this thing down and it would, it would probably benefit from it. Other than that, the steering's working great. The brake was working great. It locks the tires right up. Uh, it, it almost locks it up on pavement. So that's always awesome. And uh, nothing really nothing really shook apart. I didn't want to put the carburetor in in this episode. I'm thinking about doing like a, a side by side, how do they compare? So I'm gonna run it with this carburetor, do some time passes, maybe some zero to 60 kilometer an hour passes, and so maybe some top speed type of thing. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna swap the carburetor out to the new performance carburetor and see if those times increase and see if we get a little bit more performance out of that. But before I start chucking more performance parts into this motor, I wanna make sure that the drive system can handle it. And so far, the only weak spot so far is that small CVT. We've had a lot of interest in this tub build, a lot of kind words from you guys, and we can't thank you enough. So make sure to like and subscribe, follow if you want to follow and you really enjoy this content, and we will see you in another two weeks. You believe in love after love after love after love after love. Daddy, would you like some sausage? Daddy, would you like some sausages?